course, I want to open it to the audience, uh, but let me start, Emery. Um, the film is about so many things. We talked about it uh, at the beginning. It's history, it's art, it's family. What was it, the seed of it? Um, I'm going to try to make a very long story shorter, but uh, I'm a mixed race person. I'm part Chinese, part Australian. I was born in Japan. I'm an immigrant to Canada. I'm always interested about stories of diaspora. And 20 years ago, when I was at a um, artist residency in Germany, we had Michel Solitude in Germany, in Stuttgart. Um, I was in a writer's residence, and I met uh, many people who you may see on the screen. Um, it, uh, so it started off as a story in Germany. I first became introduced to um, uh, Iranian poetry when I was in Germany, oddly. Um, but it was when I came back to Vancouver, and, uh, and I became acquainted with the Iranian diaspora. There's a large community in Vancouver, and I was listening to those stories. It seemed to me more relevant and important that I make it about Iran. And also because of the deep-seated um, uh, love and, um, well, I mean, relevance of poetry in both Chinese and Persian culture, where you have uh, uh, poets from a thousand years ago that are still known and by everybody, oh, everybody um, today, and they still have something to say. And I thought that this was a, um, a way of joining us, not just across cultures, but across millennia, to show that we're still the same people with the same men. Um, Sandra, you became very meaningfully attached to this project. Did you sort of tag on the same love initially of what Anne Ruth described right now? No, I'd say I, I had a different uh, response and experience with it because it's it's a, it's a deep and long a long project from uh, from Anne Marie, uh, and Anne Marie gave me the graphic novel about two years ago. I was actually here at TIFF when you called me, and so when I read it. I was so moved by it that the thing that moved me the most was the relationship between the father and the daughter and that longing and that separation and how that can create different belief systems of what you think your history is and how you might be wrong and how you think a culture might be something and you might be wrong. Um, and so that kind of healing process and the connection between the father and the daughter was really what struck my heart very, very deeply. But there are so many other things that I believe in this film that, you know, after like reading the, the graphic novel and having a good cry, I said, you know, I'll do more than just voice it. I'll, I, I just so believe that this film had to be made and given to an audience and, and heard and seen that I wanted to do more than, than just act. Let's open it to you guys. Just raise your hand over the question. Come on, shy audience. Well, my involvement was much less and much later. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny. I was, I, I, I was, I guess I was just with you. Yeah. So we recorded this, and usually you don't record animation. Uh, uh, kind of live with the, all, all the other actors. So we had three recording sessions. Were one in Los Angeles, one in Toronto, and um, one in Vancouver. And so when we were recording in, in, um, in Toronto, uh, we need. Uh, so it was a three. It was a three hander. Yeah, yeah it was a who plays Mernaz and Rosie Ming and Dietmar. Dietmar. And I just couldn't find Dietmar. I mean, I, I, um, I did, you know, I did a, a voice cast far and wide, but it, what, I was looking for a very specific thing, and so Sandra said, So, yeah, we just needed, a, like, a, a, a guy to kind of, like, come in and, like, do swing voice, and then so I was like, hey, John. You're, you can read, right, John? Can you, can you, it, was, it was really the case. Can, you want to hang out? Well, if you hang out, um, can you, can you read? Can you agree with me? No, I understand that because I've done a bit of animation. It's very hard when you're isolated in a booth and you're doing scenes with an actor and you, and you want something. So sure, I'll come and read with you and then I read it. And I've just actually been in a film festival in China and I was hanging out with this German guy there and I, I said, oh, I know this guy. I know this guy. And, and we did it. So I was just reading. So we were just reading and we are just kind of going through it. And then Anne-Marie and I looked at each other. And then we're off and giggled together. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> you should just do it. Just do it. He, he thought we were kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great job. Yeah. So that's how I got involved. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'd already read the script and I loved the script, so, and I loved the movie too, by the way, I haven't seen it before, so. <laughs> and um, the film has touches of humor, which to me was so intriguing and well sort of weaved into all of this. Uh, at the bottom of it, it is serious, but those kind of sparks of life that come through a lot of the humor in the film, did, did, you, did that weave get weaved in naturally to you? Um, yes, I mean, that's who I am and how I write, but also I thought it was essential to be able to, to bring these stories uh, to people, to open them up to it, um, that you need, you need humor to let you come closer, humor gives, lets you have empathy, right, and um, it's, so, it's so satisfying to hear people laugh, and especially when I'm presenting some images that you don't associate with laughter, right, and to be able to bring lightness to some of this subject is exactly what I wanted to be able to do. Um, and in a world of major cultural divides, it seems more timely than ever to see something like this. Yeah, I think it's essential, I mean, um, I, I, want, I want to ask Christina a question, but for some of say this in case I forget, there's two things. Is Lillian Chan here? Hi, Lillian. Because a, a, a large part of this film is animation, and um, uh, we worked with artists from all across Canada, and um, um, and Lillian did a, a section when Charzad's reading the Rumi poem that they were. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you. I want to say it's, uh, it's September 11th today, if anybody noticed, and uh, um, September 11th, 2001, I was here at this festival premiering another film. Well, I didn't premiere the film because something else happened. And since then, I've been making films uh, in reaction to that and, and the, um, the need, I think, we need for, for, for openness and compassion and understanding. And so I think it's very... Um, um, it's very, not ironic, it's appropriate that this film be showing today because I, I, think, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a voice that we need to hear more of. And, uh, and Hushang Tutsi, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if everybody here knows Hushang, but uh, he's very... Hushang is also a, a very well-known playwright, um, and uh, um, he came to this project also no, knowing very little, right? He just, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, basically, I'm here because uh, my wife Shori couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm so very happy to be a part of this uh, project. It's very touching. It's so very important message to send out. And uh, after the movie, I watched this movie half of it last night. So I, think, um, I was really touched as an Iranian and also as an actor. Uh, so I asked Anne-Marie, uh, was this based on a true story? She said, no, but I think it was. I think it was based on many, many, many true stories. And uh, it's very true, it's very close to the truth. Um, whatever happened in Iran, and you said that. And, um, so I appreciate it towards that, and uh, I think it's a very important message to send out, and very touching, very beautiful. I really enjoyed it. And also, um, a great Iranian director once said, we make this movie and our responsibilities are done. <laughs> now your responsibility is start. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to embrace it. I think this is, uh, I'm going to do my best to, to spread the words about this film because it's, it's a good movie and also I feel so close to it. Thank you so much.
and just the name Iran, it's so hyper politicized um, that when you're in Canada and when you're in Iran also, like your whole existence is consumed by politics. So even your poetry is consumed by politics. Um, I just wanted to know how when you were writing the scripts and maneuvering your way throughout the movie, how did you, um, how did you negotiate that? Yeah, how did you negotiate, yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to be doing it as long as this film exists, right? I, I'm, I'm hyper aware of this, like it, Iran is so political. I mean, just everything about it is political. So how do you make a film that is not political, right? I mean, in that, in, in some ways, making a non-political film is political, right? So um, it's, uh, I, I did my best. I did my best. I, I showed this, this little gem that I was trying to foster. You know, to everybody, I took so many. Um, I took so many notes. I tried. You know, of course, I was always trying not to offend, which was difficult. But then I also wanted to say some things, right? And so, um, because I think it's really important to be able to speak, right? You, um, there's some things in it, and actually, they have nothing to do with Iran that are in the film that uh, I was going to take out because I knew that they were going to cause problems, right? But I thought, but. If I if I take this out, then I am doing. The, I, I can't take it out, right? Because then I'm doing what I hope, what I, like the opposite of what I'm trying to 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 do with the film. So it's always a balancing act, and I think you know when DB says you have to be uh, stupid to be brave, or vice versa. I think it's true. Like sometimes you just have to close your eyes and hope for the best, and hope that people can see your intent, right? That's all the time we have. I want to thank this gorgeous team.